Hi, we're Ariel. And Michelle. And we're, and we're the, the Board, board Game, game tutors. tutors. And we're, we got, we're going to be showing you Quirkle today. Um, this doesn't look like uh, everyday Quirkle that you buy at Target or whatever, uh, regular big box stores. Um, this doesn't come in a big cardboard box. Uh, but this version of Quirkle, it's called Quirkle Travel Size. I don't know why on the package it doesn't say Quirkle Travel Size, but uh, that's what it is. And um, it's essentially Quirkle. There's no major differences aside from the fact that if you look at these pieces here, here's a, here's a representative sample of what the different tiles that come with the game look like. They're about the size of my, a little bit longer than my thumbnail. And so um, when you buy a regular Quirkle from the big box store, um, that comes in the cardboard box, these pieces will be about double the size. So as you can see here, it's about the end of my thumb. That's how long the pieces are. And so, yeah, uh, this is what uh, travel size Quirkle looks like. Aside from that, it's uh, the same as regular Quirkle. And uh, we just like this bag specifically because it has a little nice little zipper. You can put all the pieces inside of it. Um, when you have to draw pieces, um, it's a little harder to look inside the bag. The bag that comes with regular Quirkle, it's a little bit tiny. Your hands don't fit in it quite as well. And so, um, yeah, it's just really easy to transport and bring around with you. And so, yeah, All right. let's go ahead with our just the basics portion of Quirkle and tell you how the game goes. So I'm just going to push this aside. All right. Let's see here. Okay, so the point of Quirkle is very similar in several ways uh, to the game Scrabble, if you've ever played that game before. Um, you need to have... Uh, pad of paper with everybody who's playing. There's my name. There's Michelle's name. You have to have a writing utensil of some sort. Um, you obviously don't need to have a pad of paper. Just any old paper will do. And um, you just need the bag. Um, all these pieces in a normal game would be going into the bag. But um, the way the game normally works is you want to try and score as many points as you possibly can. And um, I'll be showing you how to score points in a minute. But um, so you want to score points as much as you can, uh, but uh, basically once all the tiles, um, once you're done drawing tiles out of the bag, that's when the game's over, and whoever has the highest uh, point total at the end of the game wins. And so now we're going to show you how uh, a few basic turns go in the game. So uh, the way this game works is, let's pretend this is um, a hand in Quirkle is six tiles, and uh, one thing we really like about uh, Quirkle Travel Size is the fact that uh, six tiles, as compared to six tiles in Quirkle Regular Size, um, six tiles can fit in an adult hand relatively easily because you're not supposed to disclose what's in your hand, just like any game of cards or any game where you're trying to keep information secret. So as you can see, you can conceal these six tiles in your hand relatively easily. Um, so that's my hand. Um, uh, starting out, and this is Michelle's hand starting out, and so we keep this information concealed from one another. And the way you start off the game is, you look at your hand, uh, your opponent or opponents look at their hand, and you can see, all right, um, how many do I have that are the same shape, or how many do I have that are the same color? So you can see here, um, in my hand, I have two yellows. And they're different shapes, that's going to be important, uh, or um, two reds, and they're different shapes. And these ones are just singles, so that's not the highest number I have. The highest number I could say, uh, either uh, you don't announce uh, immediately, anyway, uh, what color it is or anything like that. You just say, okay, I have two that are the same color, like, and I could choose this or this. Um, if you looked at Michelle's hand, she has... Um, if we were going for same shape, Michelle has three circles, an orange circle, a red circle, and a green circle. Um, uh, if you go for color, she has two yellows, and she also has two greens. Um, so she could say uh, the highest number of either same shape or same color. And whoever announces the highest number, uh, that person starts off the game. Because uh, in regular Scrabble, you would look at the board. Uh, there's actually a board that comes with the game. Uh, with Quirkle, you can use any flat surface, any flat table. Um, you just need a fair amount of space because the game grows as you play it. 
But, um, so when we're doing this game, Michelle would announce she has three circles, and they're all different colors. Um, so she would say, I have three. And so she would start off the game. Let's, uh, if, for example, she only had, let's say, this. Let's say she only had these. Then she could just say, I have two yellows or two of the same shape. Um, since that matches the number that I have in my hand, then basically the player who is older would get to go first. So in that case, that would be me, since I'm older than Michelle. So I would start first. But since that's not what she started out with, she started out with these three. Uh, she would start by setting those uh, three pieces that she had in the middle of the table. All right. And so uh, just in the middle of the table because um, it makes it easier for everybody to reach. All right. So and then so um, at all times, you should have a hand of six tiles. So as you can see, Michelle has three. So she would need to replenish her hand back up to six by reaching into the bag blindly and getting three more pieces. Normally, I couldn't see her hand, but um, as you can see, um, this is just for your benefit primarily. So now she's back up to six. She's good. So that was her turn. Now it would be my turn. Now, in normal turn of Quirkle, you can do, uh, there are three steps, and um, you only have two main options of what you can do. Um, the first step is you look at your hand, you see however many, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I skipped one thing with Michelle's face, I'm sorry. Um, she put down three tiles. You score one point for every tile that you put down, or um, uh, if you, uh, yeah, I'll go on to that later. But you, uh, she scores one point for each tile she lays down. So on Michelle's score pad, I would put three. Okay. Um, in the past, we experimented with using notch marks like this. But um, if you're playing with children, uh, doing like one, two, three, four, five, and drawing a line across. But if you're playing with children, in our experience, this isn't the best way to keep score because sometimes uh, children write rather sloppily. And also, if they write sloppily, they might be inclined to cheat and say, oh, that's not five, that was six, or whatever. Like, yeah. Uh, so probably not best to do that with children. Also, the way that we do it, you kind of know, easily know what your score is the whole game, rather than having to tally it all up at the end. Right. So Michelle just scored three, because she did one, two, three tiles. So for my turn, when I uh, put pieces down, I would do it so, okay, I'll look at this. Okay, there aren't any yellows. That's not that helpful. Um, there are red, so I could do that. There's a green. I could do that. Or an orange. I could do that. So basically, you want to lay down lines. Uh, the, uh, the way you lay down tiles here, you can't just go all over the place in terms of laying tiles down. Like, you can't put one orange here and one green here. Like So in every line, they either have to be the same color or the same shape. So for here, I'd obviously be going for the same color, but this is an illegal move because if you look at that, I added to this line and I also added to this line. So what you have to remember when playing this game is, so it has to be the same line, so one line only. Um, and in that line, it either has to be the same color or the same shape and also no duplicates. So, um, in order to maximize uh, the amount of points that I would get this turn, I'm going to get these two reds because, like I said, they can't be duplicates. I don't have a red circle, so that's okay. So I would take these two, and uh, let's just say I put them here and here. So now I count that line that I just made. Uh, one, two, three. I count this one because I'm building off of it. And so I would get three points for this. I only added two tiles, but I got three points because I added on to an existing line. So I would get three points for this move. All right, and then I replenish my hand. And so the three steps, uh, sorry, I didn't more clearly elaborate it, but the three steps are you place tile or tiles. So um, that, I just did that. I wrote my score down, which I just did that. And then you replenish your hand. Let's say, for example, okay, now it's Michelle's turn again. Um, if you look here, she has two green squares. 
Um, she can't play both of those because if she put both of these in this line here, um, that's a, there's a duplicate in that line. That's an illegal move. So you can't have duplicates in the same line. Uh, right. So that's that. Um, so Michelle looks at her hand. Um, she's not really that happy with it overall because at most she could just put one down here and then get one, two points. So she's not really that happy with that, for example. So let's say this is the other move that you can do. Let's say you're, you're really not happy with what you currently have in your hand. You're looking for different tiles that will give you a better advantage. Um, basically, you would forfeit your turn. Um, you would give up as many of your tiles as you want. You could give away one, you could give away two, you could give away your whole hand. I set those aside and replenish your hand now. But you forfeit putting tiles down this turn. So let's say Michelle grabs that's one, two, three, four, five, one more. Okay. Um, and then you take the tiles that you currently had in your hand. You scoop those up and you put them back in the back. So that is one option you can do. Instead of laying tiles down, you can just swap your hand because you're just not satisfied with what you have. Um, so that's that. And um, Michelle's turn would be over because since she didn't place any tiles, she wouldn't score anything and she wouldn't have to replenish her hand because she just did that. Um, so that's the other valid move that you can do. Now, so obviously this game would go really slowly if you only kept going by two or three or four points each. Um, so this is where we get into something else right over here. So um, the long-term goal is to end up with the highest point value at the end of the game. Um, but um, here's something else that you want to do. These are what you would, I would call your short-term goals. You want to go for uh, lines that are completed lines that have either all six colors of the same shape or all the shapes of the same color. And you can see here, um, all the colors here in this line would be purple, red, green, orange, yellow, and blue. And so whenever you count a line of six, if uh, there are six uh, legal tiles in a row or um, in a column, uh, that means that's a quirkle. And whoever puts the last tile or let's say it was like that and one player put this onto it. Whoever finishes that line gets six points for finishing the line, and they also get an additional six bonus points. That's what a corkle is. It's a nonsense word, but that's what they used to refer to it as. Um, and you can also achieve a corkle in the same way by being all the same color. So in this case, it would be purple, but it has all the shapes. All six shapes are a starburst, a circle, a square, a diamond, a uh, clover, and they call this crisscrosses, uh, crisscross shape. Um, so that's that. And here, over here are a few more examples. You could have all blue with all the different shapes, all red with all the different shapes. Uh, basically, uh, use your imagination, obviously. There's only so many combinations that you could make. But whenever you make these combinations, you get more points. So instead of just getting the amount of points that are in the line, you get bonus points. And um, like we said, you can always lay tiles in the same line. So let's say, for example, uh, this is what the board looked like, just this area right here. So to finish this off, you would just need a blue starburst. But let's say you had, um, let's say you had this. So you have this combination. So you know you have the blue starburst. So that means you can finish this line and get a corkle for 12 points total. But you also have these blues here. So uh, like I said, you can always lay it down in one line and it can count for multiple lines. So for example, you could, for your turn, you could put the blue starburst here. You could put the star here. And you the diamond put, actually. Oh, diamond, sorry. And the clover here. So, since I laid down these three pieces before, um, for my turn, 
I would get a corkle, so 12 points for finishing this line, plus one, two, three, because the three pieces that I just, tiles I laid down, count toward this line as well. So I would get 12 plus three, which would be 15. And I would write down 15 on my score. Obviously this doesn't really match because I was doing a previous game, but let's just say I did 15. So then I would add these together then I would get 18. So yeah, um, that's how we do scoring when we're playing Quirkle. And uh, yeah, um, those are how Quirkles work and all the basic um, aspects of how to play the game. Um, is there anything else you want to add, Michelle? So basically you're going to play until somebody runs out of tiles. So you're going you're gonna to take turns drying tiles from that bag, and eventually you're going to all, you're going to, someone's going to draw the last tile. And then when one of the players uses up um, the last tile in their hand, the game ends right there and they get a bonus for doing so. Is that, is that a six point bonus? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I, I forgot to mention that. I, I think I messed up earlier. I'm sorry. I apologize about that. Um, I said, I think I said earlier that uh, when you exhaust the bag, the game is over. That's not actually when the game's over. The game is over when, uh, the first player to completely eliminate all the tiles that they have left in their hand after the bag has been exhausted. Um, the first player to get rid of all the tiles in their hand, that person gets six extra bonus points in addition to whatever they just scored on their last turn. Yeah, and at that point the game ends and you total points. Mm -hmm. And also this game is for two to four players, right? Yeah, yeah. so um, uh, you just go in a clockwise manner. So like if I started, then it would be Michelle, then it would be the person on the other end of the table, then it would be the person to my right. Mm -hmm. And that's how the gameplay goes. So if you have any questions, if you think we left anything else out, uh, please let us know. Oh, uh, one last thing. Sorry. Like I said, you can uh, uh, think in terms of uh, same color, same shape, uh, on this, or same shape on the same line. So for example, if I wanted to put this diamond, so let's say that's what the game board looked like. Um, I could put this piece here and this piece here. Or I could put this over here. Or I could put these two up here. Mm -hmm. um, the main point here to remember is it has to be the same line. So this is going to be a really crucial skill to master in terms of the fact that when you get um, a really large uh, board where most of the pieces are already out in the field, you're going to have limited spaces in terms of where you can put things. And so uh, being versatile in terms of what part of the line you want to put things on is uh, a good skill to master because then you can maximize the amount of points that you get. And also, for example, let's say I had, um, okay, do I have a green diamond? Yes, I do. Over here. This would also be a legal move, a legal move, not an illegal move. This would be a legal move because if I put this one green diamond here, that would count as one, two points and three, four points because it counts for both this line and this line. So um, that's another way to get more bonus points, uh, putting things in that match both sides. If, for example, let's see here. Uh, yeah, there, there will be some instances where uh, you can't place anything in the middle and that space is dead space, basically. You can't do anything there. But um, yeah, all right. All right, thanks so much for watching. Right. And thanks, we'll guys. see you in our other videos. Okay, bye. Right. Bye.